Patrick Bernard Schmidt, CEO, CTO of Nova Crypto LTD and EOS Nation, Swiss Ambassador. I will cover the following topics. Liquid Apps and DAP Network Project with Zach Gold. Then Voice Easy Onboarding with Shane Moore of CryptoWriter. Everypedia Usage with Sam Kazemian. NFT Evolution with Martin Breuer of EOS Nation. DeFi, EOS X, Flash Loans and Vault, the product developed by EOS Nation Block Producer, Nova Crypto Project Startup, and you will find into the video description a web link to the Mindmap EOS IO Swiss Workshop updated. Then you will find also a web link to the collection EOS IO Swiss BL on the What's Atomic Hub with some NFTs of this uh, video of today i encourage you to subscribe to this channel because you will never miss educational digest content about eos eos io that's what i do that's what i love so join this channel thank you very much to join and have a nice workshop so today it's the eos the liquidity medium so EOSIO deliver different things. EOSIO, that's the technology uh, used by all the chains into the EOSIO ecosystem, included the EOS mainnet. And this EOSIO software implement the DPoS consensus mechanism, delegated proof of stake, okay, based on Byzantine fault toler tolerance. Then he deliver a smart contract platform and also it guarantee a reliable execution. EOSIO technology will give you the possibility as a developer or entity that want to deliver blockchain to your customer that will give you the possibility to implement business process oriented solutions. BPOS in short, EOS.io, the website. That's the open source software. We agree. It is at the center of all ecosystems we are building and modelizing to reflect any reality that we envision. When I say all uh, ecosystems, what I mean, it's not only blockchain based ecosystems, but additional systems and protocols that will benefit from the EOSIO ecosystem as an entry point. Because we need orchestration of the process, and in each process there are steps, so process steps, that a business or entity is constituted. That means we need a deterministic execution, and EOSIO is providing that, where you can express the same final output regardless of the given input, okay? And in this sense, this is very reliable because often the software implemented is subject because among other phenomena like low latency, environmental change, owner change, database change, and any other phenomena that I cannot uh, expect. So, that could behave in an unexpected manner. We agree all. So it's very important. The software today has to be robust. And by using the EOSIO technology, you ensure that. Therefore, we have something called the blockchain that is ordering in a sequential way the proof of objects state. So let's come on that. At the level of an application system, we have events that are triggered each time an object is solicited. What exactly means? The object perceives an action and then he manifests an event. And this is at this exact momentum when the object manifests an event that this object is changing of state. So, this is at this moment exactly that we have to store the proofs 
of object state. And we will store that where? That will be very value added to store that in a blockchain because it is immutable, because it is uh, auditable to do so. You can prove what was stored at which time, at which date, by who, and you will store hash on the EOS mainnet, a hash of your proofs of object state. And into the EOS IO ecosystem, we have something called the EOS mainnet, EOS in short. And this EOS mainnet is a based EOS IO chain or network with a block time of 500 milliseconds, so half a second, and a confirmation time, we say also LIB, last irreversible block, of three minutes. And it is tending to approach the block time, so half a second, with some implementation of the open source software EOS IO that's coming. And EOS, so the EOS mainnet, is the fastest, flexible, resilient, public and permissionless blockchain in the entire blockchain sphere. So EOS mainnet, you see in the center of this infographic, you have EOS, the mainnet that is constantly running, okay? It is uh, uh, maintained by block producer that you see producing block on the top here, the robot here. Uh, here I, I have taken the example of EOS Nation block producer that is verifying, validating, producing blocks as all other block producers. But EOS Nation has something different since the very beginning. They educate, they, they organize, they lead, they marketing since the very beginning. They, they are not just here to verifying, validating, producing blocks. Okay. There are other block producers also that do the same, okay? And for this reason, they are in the 21 active block producer. So you see here this glass uh, with, this is the EOS mainnet. This is the settlement layer. This is auditable and transparent layer. And the value creation goes in, goes out of this glass. That's the EOS mainnet, and it is used by the resource exchange that will be the new resource model. It is coming, the power-up model, but indeed, it's a resource exchange using a new resource model. And there are exchanges that are using also this EOS mainnet, because the EOS mainnet is at the layer one, just on top of the EOS IO protocol because the EOSI open source software is delivering a protocol. And for this reason, EOS has to be used as it should be, normally as a settlement layer, auditable and transparent layer. The, the, you have to store on it the, the proof of change object state, okay? You, you have to, to, to store that. And it's clear, uh, this EOS mainnet is used by the users on the left and is also used on the right by the providers, the developers. So let's focus on the left first, the user, that their values are listened by the block producer and the block producer, they are the operators of this system. And what values, for example? They want an easy onboarding. You can have a, the best blockchain in the world, tools, solutions that are not easy to onboard, that will be difficult for the users. They need also ship transaction fee. Okay, we don't say free, we say ship, fee-less transaction. Okay, they want also that this is secure, there should be interoperability. When we say inter interconnected, we mean also to interoperability. And earn something, it's possible if you are learning, publishing, collaborate. For the DAP solution provider and developers, they need a toolbox to create their platform. You can use the EOSIO smart contract platform 
and also the EOS mainnet as a main blockchain to develop your decentralized application. Too. And also, you need reduced costs to offer your service if you are using the EOS mainnet, the EOS IO technology, you want to have something as a reduced cost, and we have these possibilities. So the developer, they want to have something liquid and stable mechanism, and also micro decentralized web service. You need also to have an effective advertising, a return on investment. You are developing your solution, you want to, to see if there is traction. In the community, we say also create bridges. Uh, we are in the community of EOS, EOS IO ecosystem, but we are open to other blockchains protocol. Okay. In the EOS IO ecosystem, we have many chains because we need to scale horizontally also. That's the reason why we have different blockchain into the EOS IO ecosystem and not only the EOS mainnet. But we have outside of our EOS IO ecosystem other blockchains protocol like Ethereum, like Bitcoin. Scalable, repeatable, repeatable solution. It's clear. When you are a developer, you want to scale. You have to use maybe a layer two solution. And into the EOS IO ecosystem, on the top of the EOS IO ecosystem, we have something called the DAP network. I will come in a second on that. SSO single sign-on we will see also that by using the DAP network we have possibility to have universal account you connect one time with your account and you have access to all the chains that are into the EOS IO ecosystem okay not only the EOS mainnet but also WAX, Telos, BOSS that's the, the different blockchain that we have if you go on eos.io website that will be easier to onboard because you will understand very fast what does it mean the concept of eos.io software if you are developing a solution that has to be decentralized you need also to have the hardware infrastructure layer of your solution that is decentralized okay yeah. because if your solution is based on cloud to store the data that would be not really decentralized but if your data are stored on ipfs and that we will see on the ipfs network through the services provided by the dap network because the dap network is providing solution to incentivize the ipfs because the ipfs network is subject maybe to not be maintained you, you can have nodes in the ipfs network ipfs nodes that are not more running or not more maintained and by using ipfs nodes uh, custodian ipfs nodes and going through the dap network you have this guarantee that at least you will have your data at the most decentralized okay You see on this uh, graphic, I have the stack of the DAP network. And the DAP network is this middleware layer. Uh, and this middleware layer, we say also the layer two trustless solution. And we have something new, the hedge DSP, that I will discuss with Zach Goal in a minute. So uh, this is the stack. You have the base protocol on the bottom that support the EOS IO open source software. And the EOS IO open source software is implementing the protocol that support IPFS. And you see there is the EOS mainnet running here. We need the EOS mainnet because the provisioning layer for the DAP network is the EOS mainnet. At the level of the DAP network, you see we have liquid link that is uh, used to connect to multiple chains. Indeed, to multiple blockchains protocol uh, on the left here, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay. 
On the top left, you see that you have the users. And the users, they want to onboard into the EOS IO ecosystem more easily. And for this reason, they are using systems and getaways that are on top of the application. And by using the DAP account getaway, the DAP account getaway use the liquid account, the liquid oracle, and also the, v, the VRAM services of the DAP network, DWeb. Uh, that's also a getaway to onboard easier into the EOS IO ecosystem. And we have Google Cloud platform currently in standby block producer, about 50 positions, something like that. Okay. So by using the Google Cloud platform, you have a lot of services uh, in the cloud and that makes sense to use the cloud also. Okay. And we can say that is infinite systems protocol scalability by using this uh, stack, okay, of the DAP network. And you see, we have uh, the block time, as I said, the block time on every EOSIO network is half a second. And the LIB, the last irreversible block, it's three minutes on the EOS mainnet, is three seconds on the BOSS. BOSS is an EOSIO based chain also, that is using the EOSIO software. And this is three seconds there. But the good news for the EOS mainnet, we will approach the half a second because the EOS IO 2 version, okay, uh, release uh, 2.2 uh, 2 is uh, giving this possibility. So the IPFS network, it's clear. You see all these nodes, IPFS here on, the, on this schema. Uh, we have to incentivize that these IPFS nodes are always maintained. If you want to pin your IPFS uh, resource, you have a different possibility, your own IPFS node, you can be in a private uh, network of, of IPFS, IPNS. You can use Pinata cloud service or you can use liquid NFT by using the service with nft.org, you use the IPFS and at the same time, the hash of IPFS are proof on chain, verifiable on chain. And HDSP, we have already a link, it is still in uh, development, the UI is in development to be an HDSP. So now we will go to the video with Zach Gold. I am now with Zach Gaul, he is the head of the community for Liquid Apps. And not only, he is also very active on all the entire EOS IO ecosystem. He is also with a show, Named, Everything EOS, longer. Running EOS podcast since March 2018. <laughs> yeah, baby. So uh, now we will speak about Liquid Apps because it is this universal uh, layer two that we have on top of the entire uh, EOSIO ecosystem. And it is not just a layer two, but we will speak what exactly mean this liquid apps DAP network. So maybe first, before to, to begin, Zach, can you explain what is your uh, journey, your role uh, as a community uh, manager? For, uh, for liquid apps, uh, you do different things. Can you explain maybe first? Yeah, so I mean, community is probably the thing everyone sees the most. If you're in our Telegram channel, you're probably talking to me for the most part. I'm probably one well sharing the news. I'm also the one probably writing the tweets. Um, I have a lot of like private conversations with community members and projects, um, especially like uh, in the EOS community at first, like uh, when Liquid Apps first launched in 2019, it was only on EOS at first. And at that time, uh, it was leading up to the B1 June stuff. EOS hype was at its peak. 
so early on, I was basically able to introduce, uh, connect all the projects to Liquid Apps. Not that they couldn't find it. It was a pretty uh, hot project at the time, still is. But a lot of the connecting of the projects, just knowing all of the founders already going into it and being able to connect them with, with our team at Liquid Apps, setting up like Slack channels, almost every team building uh, on the DAP network right now, we're planning to build on the DAP network. We have like private Slack channels with connecting our Slack groups together. You might not see that publicly, but it exists. There's no secret there. Um, but the, the role has kind of changed over the last two, two plus years. And as DAP network expands, I mean, a couple months ago, we deployed the, the first bridge to Ethereum. Uh, from EOS IO to Ethereum, we've already had bridges from other EOS IO chains, which uh, with Liquid X between like uh, Wax and EOS are connected. They've been connected. Um, but now my role is a lot of um, and. And analysis, I guess you could say, of other blockchains because DAP network, like the plan is not to be like just connected to Ethereum or just EOS IO. The plan is to be like a layer two or middleware layer for every blockchain. And we're going to get into edge DSPs here later in the conversation. <laughs> But that's a really huge development uh, for Liquid Apps technology, DAP network technology. And the reason is because it's so lightweight and you, you abstract the need to, to run a full node. Um, we can get into that. Um, basically being an advocate for the strongest projects, the projects that I'm passionate about. If you've been following uh, DAP account DAO, for example, I'm really active there because they're building some really awesome stuff on the DAP network. I do that independent of my role at Liquid Apps as myself. Uh, with some new grant programs we'll be rolling out in 2021 that are going to be available for um, non-technical community members and project or pro people from the projects or just from the community. Uh, ways to support the DAP network in a non-technical way, I guess is my hint. Uh, so that's going to be really exciting. And then there's some other developments happening. There's something uh, from this guy Pax in the community. He initiated this uh, thing called DAP Fund. Uh, I'm sure he'll be speaking about that more publicly, maybe even by the time this is published. So that's exciting. So there's just a lot of really cool stuff happening with the DAP network. And I'm kind of just like the hub with a bunch of spokes around me. I make sure uh, like Benny and Tal and Kobe and everyone, all the uh, upper management liquid apps, I'm basically the filter for them. I'm basically looking at everything happening from a holistic view. <laughs> and I, I pass on all of the most important stuff. Like they might mm -hmm. come across it on their own, but I make sure that they're aware of different trends that I'm seeing and, and things like that. Um, and then one of the other big visual things you've probably seen is the DAP talks. So I do, uh, I manage the YouTube channel for Liquid Apps. I do a thing called DAP Talk TV, where I basically bring on project founders, DSPs, yeah. influencers like Myra on the last one. The whole idea of DAP Talk when I joined Liquid Apps was because it's what I wished Block One would have done with EOS. I always open up every episode with, welcome back to DAP Talk TV, the open conversation between the Liquid Apps team and the DAP network community, because I wish there was a from the block one team to the EOS community type of show, and we never had that. So I try to do what I wish others w would have done on their own, but obviously representing the DAP network. And I, I always want to have, I, I'm an advocate of communication. It, it is my superpower is a, a communicator and, and filtering down that information and simplifying it for, for the rest of the, the world. And I, I think that's one of the most important roles uh, with Liquid Apps is being that, I, I guess, non-technical voice, because this is some very complicated tech. I, okay. What I try to do is take these technical concepts and simplify them to a way that I understand them myself. And then that's how I explain it to the community. Yeah. And I think it benefits. Yeah. And, you, and you do a great job. There is no <laughs> doubt. Thank you. Uh As far as DeFi and, and where Li Li or DAP network fits within DeFi, I mean, oracles are the obvious source. Uh, you could have unlimited oracles, as many as you want. With edge DSPs, I could see there being uh, like swarms of oracles being run by, the, by even the end users. Um, 
uh, once edge DSPs are out, uh, you could turn your end users into agents for you if you want. And what I mean by that is imagine you were Uniswap and you wanted to um, host your website in IPFS, but you wanted to seed the IPFS it, uh, across all of your end users. So maybe you have certain um, machines set up that are always online and those are like your, your core infrastructure. Yeah. But then all of your end users are also seeding uh, the IPFS uh, hosting. Think of like BitTorrent uh, and like seeding torrent files, how you have all of these thousands of people across the world hosting a, a movie file or a game or something. Whenever you go to download it, the, the system automatically finds the seeds that have the lowest latency to you and it downloads them all. So it downloads like fragments of a file. So if I have a one gig file, I'm downloading a couple megabytes here, a couple megabytes there from all of these different nodes across the network. Exactly. That's going to be something that might be enabled with Edge DSPs where your end users are basically running and this is all powered by Wasm. Wasm is amazing. Uh, you could run this containerized Wasm in the background of your web browser, yeah, you, your end users could basically not even know it's running or they could know it's running and you could have proof of uh, useful work, for example, where you're, you're basically, my, you could be a miner mm -hmm. just by being on the website and serving up I IPFS files to other users on the website. Or exactly. maybe you could exactly. be an oracle and you're basically uh, in the background, the logic could be, okay, uh, from the smart contract, it could say, okay, I want to choose a hundred random people on our website, ping this API feed for this price, take all 100 answers, aggregate them, take the average, and then that's the price we're gonna use. But the initial use case and the use case you're gonna hear the most about over the next couple of months is gonna be interoperability and bridging. So that's step one. I'm getting ahead of myself talking about this crazy IPFS stuff, but that's because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I sometimes get ahead of myself and look at yeah. where this could be in a, a, yeah. a year or two or whatever. But at, at first it's gonna be able to connect all blockchains without yeah. the nodes having to run any special software, uh, without even having to run a full node, which, which is one of the biggest innovations. Think about infrastructure on any blockchain you've ever used. EOS, let's talk EOS because yeah. that, that's the core audience. Mm -hmm. Block produce, To be a block producer requires a very high level of technical experience. You have to have a DevOps guy at least full time. You have to have dedicated infrastructure. Regular people cannot run EOS infrastructure. It, it's very difficult and it's very heavy as well. Um, and one of the limitations since the genesis of the DAP network has been that to run a full DSP, you always had to run a full EOS node, uh, which is heavy. And that that's including even if you wanted to be a DSP that mostly service like the WAX blockchain, for example, you would still have to run that EOS node, which is very heavy. So is a limitation. And then you also, if you're talking about other blockchains, like if you're working with Ethereum or like Polkadot or Solana, they're not going to, they might want to run infrastructure on the DAP network, but they probably don't care to run anything touching EOS IO because they just don't care about it. And even if it's a requirement, like that's fine, but you got to abstract it from them as far as possible. So <laughs> So that's what Tal was able to create with Edge DSP is you could basically have a lightweight protocol. There's no other IBC solution out there that doesn't require their, uh, their infrastructure provider, their nodes to be running a full node on every single blockchain that they're connecting. So like a good example is our own bridge, the, the DAP network bridge from Ethereum to EOS. You have to be running a full EOS node and, a, and an Ethereum client. So you're running an Ethereum node also. Whereas with Edge DSP, it's being run in the browser. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. You don't run the, the it, it's like on demand. As soon as you load the browser, all it, it takes a snapshot of the current state of the blockchain, Voila. which is 
a couple hundred megabytes at most, and that's for EOS. Most other blockchains are much smaller. It mm -hmm. takes a snapshot of, of the state of the chain at that time, and then it just starts watching events, and it, tr it, it triggers actions based on events on the chain, but you don't have to include that giant multi-terabyte state history file exactly. of like the EOS blockchain, and that's huge. Um, obviously, with any network, you want to have redundancy. You want to have as many uh, nodes running as possible. Um, and with the DAP network for the last couple of years, I don't know if we've ever had more than 20 active nodes at one time and it fluctuates in the, the core nodes, you, you know, there, there's a handful of like really strong ones, but it, it's not a huge number. And we've also worked with, um, other projects and parties who have wanted to work on the DAP network that wanted to run the infrastructure, but it's too complex. It, it they would have to put someone full time on it to get it up and running and to maintain it. Whereas with edge DSP, it's like point click, load up your browser and that's a, it's a done deal. And um, with the web assembly, the WASM, the web assembly protocol embedded into the browser. That's just fantastic. Status is that Tal's full focus has been on Edge DSP. Same with Nathan, same with Nat, same with David. Every, everyone's core focus right now is getting Edge DSP out into a production environment. Uh, what it's going to enable is many to many token bridging, which in, yeah. in more interoperability and having the ability to connect chains uh, that may or may not have already been made public. Uh, huh. um, the next milestone. I would think is going to be connecting um, chains that are EVM compatible, but not Ethereum mainnet. And the, the bridging, because it's many to many, you could connect chains that have nothing to do with EOS. So typically with, with a bridge, um, let, let's use P tokens for an example. I love P tokens, P network. And what Uh, there was an article from uh, Banco explaining a cross-chain uh, link uh, for uh, liquid apps and Edge DSP. Uh, can you maybe come, come on that? Officially speaking, uh, the Banco article didn't mention Edge DSP specifically, <laughs> but it does sound an awfully like awful lot like uh, Edge DSP technology running in the browser. So yeah, I mean. There's a lot of projects that are looking at the um, what's been made public so far with the Edge DSPs and what's it, what, what it's going to enable. And they're asking us, there's a lot of projects that are like waiting for the code to be released publicly and put in production. And obviously there's some, uh, Talbu Scal and Benny Hakak, they came from Bancor. There's some Bancor. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. A Tal built Bancor X. So you think back, uh, when Bancor is just an Ethereum project and when it first came to EOS, Tau was the one that built Bancor X, which is the interchain connection between Bancor and EOS. So that was almost three years ago. It's just been a, a, a long progression to further decentralizing it, optimizing it, making the nodes completely decentralized and lightweight. And yeah, Bancor putting... is the backbone. Bancor is the backbone for a lot of projects as, for example, uh, D-Web, from uh, Egal Herzog, uh, you are uh, providing Oracle, liquid Oracle. And with the Bancor network, uh, there is the chain link uh, that is used for the um, automated, automated market maker for the AMM, the, li the liquidity, uh, liquidity pool. There are a lot of using chain, chain link as Oracle. It's possible that in the future, maybe you will, they will use your liquid oracle solution i would love for them to use liquid oracle solution i would love for everyone to use liquid oracle solution but at the same time i do understand chainlink brings the partnership with chainlink and using chainlink brings a lot of yeah positives to any project that's using them they have the network effect and as far as a, a security of price oracles Ch chainlink's really good i'm not gonna say that chainlink's bad but yes, they, they could potentially use Liquid Oracles in the future, but so could Uniswap, so could Nudex, so could any, any. DEX 
I mean, there, there's also ways that you could use um, not necessarily liquid or well, kind of liquid oracles because they'd be using the IBC, but yeah. you could actually take chain link consensus on price oracles and basically bridge their consensus to other blockchains to use chain link consensus with uh, edge DSPs or regular DSPs to uh, serve up that data. You could actually even do it from an Ethereum testnet, which is you could have oracles running for free there um, and then use that data to publish on like an EOS mainnet type thing. There, there's a lot of things you could do, but we're, we're talking Bancor okay. and Liquid Oracles. Uh, I don't have any confirmation. Bancor is a completely separate team from Liquid Apps. Like as, as from the Liquid App side, we would love if, and I'm speaking for myself, but I'm assuming it's for everyone. We would love if Bancor used everything we ever built and <laughs> built it. We want them to adopt our tech just like anyone else. And I was very, we were surprised to see that um, they basically admitted that they want to use the edge DSPs in their uh, blog article. So that's out in the open and public now. I think more mm -hmm. information about that will be published uh, in the coming weeks. So it wasn't a surprise to me that it was published. It was a surprise that it was published, but the content of it wasn't a surprise to me, I guess we could say. Um, and it's great to see that they want to move to Polkadot. Um, and if they want to move to Polkadot, if they want to, if that, that's the thing is, so right now the, the bridge contracts that are public is there's an EOS IO contract and then there's uh, an EVM contract, which we use to connect to Ethereum. There's a lot of other EVM based uh, smart contract blockchains. So using the uh, contracts that have already been open sourced and made public by Liquid Apps, any developer could connect to another EVM chain using the contracts that exist. And that includes like Tron's EVM based, uh, Cosmos chains are EVM based, um, a lot of parachains on Polkadot are EVM based. So anything using the Ethereum virtual machine, it's just like the code's already there. I mean, with very little modifications, Matic is EVM based. So there's just a lot of other chains that without much additional work that the, the bridge technology as it exists today it could already be used for these other chains. What the edge DSP will enable is the many to many uh, token, not just, we talk about token bridging a lot, but it's really a, a cross chain data connection. You can pass any type of data. Tokens yeah. are just the most common form of data, but the many to many token bridging is really one of the secret sauces to what an edge DSP enables. And that's, what's going to be different than the traditional DSP model and the bridge model that we've released up until now. Um, a, a good comparison I can compare to how P network works with the P tokens, which is great, by the way. Um, so they have PBTC. It's very popular on EOS and it's very popular on Ethereum. Yeah, it is to it's wrap a, a Bitcoin. It's a wrapped Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. So if I have PBTC on EOS, but I want PBTC on Uniswap, yeah. I cannot send that token directly from EOS to Ethereum. I have to unwrap it first, make it Bitcoin again, and then rewrap it on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So if, if you think of it like that, what Edge DSPs and the many-to-many -many token bridging enables is it allows a, a it, you, I, I like to call it a universal token. It's a token that could live on any blockchain yeah. and be passed back and forth without ever going yeah. back to its originating chain. Yeah. Imagine if someone would develop like wrapped EOS and EOS could be on any blockchain. It could be passed between Ethereum and Polkadot Oh. without even having to touch the EOS mainnet. It never has to get unwrapped. It could just go to all these chains. Directly from, a, from, a, from an edge DSP. Yes, the edge DSPs are like the connecting agents. Basically an edge DSP could uh, on demand, like uh, on demand, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. spin up whatever, whatever chain it needs to connect to and, and do the, the bridging action. From a developer standpoint, they have to deploy a contract on the originating ah, chain yeah. and all of the destination chains. Yeah, exactly. So let's say you would have to have a, a bridge contract on uh, EOS and then yeah. a, a destination bridge contract on like Ethereum, on like Moonbeam, on like Tron, any, any uh, blockchain you wanted to be able to deploy the new DEX token to, you just have to... Uh, deploy a contract, but the benefit to the developer, and this is the case with traditional DSPs also, is you don't have to run any infrastructure. 
because the edge DSPs are running it for you and you could run it yourself. You mm -hmm. could use like custodians where I say, okay, we're going to run an edge DSP and six of our friends are going to run an edge DSP. And it's kind of like just a proof of authority, like multi-sig type thing. Yeah. Or you could just, you can make your consensus randomly choose edge DSPs. I, I will pay this much per action for an edge DSP. And I don't care who my edge DSP is. Just select them randomly from, randomly uh, the, network. from the network. Yeah, maybe pick them based on the most stake. So they have the most skin in the game, the highest reputation. Uh, you could use random edge DSPs. <laughs> I don't think any of that stuff, it, it, like the consensus mm -hmm. to uh, decide on the edge DSPs, that's not something that Liquid Apps necessarily okay. is, is building. That would be for the DAP developer to come up with how they want to reach consensus amongst yeah, the edge yeah, DSPs. Indeed, uh... At, in the initial uh, versions of edge DSP, it's not the types of entities that will probably be used are going to be similar to the ones that we see with regular DSPs. Like anyone could become an edge DSP, but if you want developers to use your edge DSP, you kind of have to come with your own reputation or your yeah. own mm -hmm. things that value adds that you could add to the project. Uh, yeah, um, as always. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There is a UI under development for registering edge DSPs to make it as simple as possible for the end users. Work is ongoing with the edge DSP. The next thing that comes out of Liquid Apps will be the edge DSP. It's got the sole focus of the development team besides um, maintaining and helping maintain all of the projects already out, out there in the DAP network. Like the core focus of the team is getting edge DSPs out into production because this is going to be like the next step. One thing to keep in mind is that um, there is still, especially initially going to be a need for full DSPs, like, like the block start type DSPs. And the reason is because um, you still do need to run a full node to be running VRAM. Mm -hmm. VRAM is one service that is still going to run on EOS because at the end of the day, all of the billing on the DAP network uh, is still happening on EOS. The provisioning um, layer. The provisioning layer is still on yeah. EOS. So there is still a need for full DSPs, but I envision that most of the DSPs on the network will be edge DSPs yeah. by, by orders of magnitude more because it's just so much easier and you could do almost everything with the edge DSP. Yeah. <laughs> for any reason to have a full DSP might be deprecated. Yeah. I, I'm, that'd be a, a towel vision thing. Um, but one thing that's going to simplify the DAP network with the edge DSPs is, is that uh, traditionally with the DAP network, we have a whole plethora of services from VRAM, liquid storage, liquid oracles, um, liquid crone or liquid scheduler. I mean, so you have all these different services. They have their own packages, their own pricing. Whereas with edge DSPs, it's just one universal service. So it's kind of like you think of like the service as being almost like cell phone minutes. You prepay for your cell phone minutes mm -hmm. and every service runs with w through that universal service. So it makes it a lot easier for a developer. You only need to stake to, if you're staking to a DSP and you have to stake to one package instead of like four different packages or five different packages, like for bridging, for example, you needed four packages. Yeah. To for each DSP to, to be able to bridge, whereas now it's a, a universal service. One mm -hmm. one purpose of a full DSP running the full infrastructure is that they could be kind of an orchestrator of edge DSPs running in liquid running liquid accounts. So one DSP. So typically, if you're running through one DSP, you could say it's centralized, but let's say there could be two DSPs, so you have some redundancy still, but their consensus could be reached by a swarm of edge DSPs running on top of that DSP. So using liquid accounts, or maybe something like DAP account, DAP account. you could have all of these different edge DSPs, especially if they're part of a DAO, for example, if there was a DAO that could integrate DAP accounts, that'd be really a, a good idea. 
where you could have a swarm of edge DSPs that reach their consensus at the, I guess, second or third layer. And then their consensus could be uh, pushed down on chain through the, the full yeah. DSP. That's Think about what's possible whenever one of the things wasm does really well it, it isolates uh like an operating system environment within your web yeah. browser mm -hmm. so it, it's safe from a security standpoint because it can't like access your local storage for example on your computer so it's isolated whatever's running in your browser it doesn't have permissions to touch anything on your like local computer you have a shared memory layer across all of the different nodes on the networks. So, uh, guys, we will finish on a bullish uh, term. <laughs> Write that in your uh, dictionary. Bullish on EOS, we are bullish on EOS, and uh, we are bullish also on the DAP network. One, two, three, go, go DAP! DAP. <laughs>
uh, different writers now that are that are on the team um, that come in and and write anywhere from you know one to, to ten pieces a month, depending on on how prolific they are and how much how much they have and, and can do. Uh, you know, it's just a, it's just, my story, Patrick, is just an example of how anybody that really wants to get involved in the community, like you, uh, can can really uh, grow and and work their way into uh, in, into a community and and become uh, a contributing member of that community instead of someone that's just on the sideline uh, as a big. hodler. <laughs> uh, so it's it's a lot of fun, but yeah, we we've grown it now. Uh, Kudos to um, kudos to the guys here. Uh, they had a vision, uh, and and we're actively working towards getting that vision in place. The real goal for Crypto Rider is um, is is simply to drive crypto knowledge and drive crypto expansion out to the community. We want to grow. Uh, and, and grow and educate uh, the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've done that so far and we've chosen the platform to do that on, on, on voice, but we, we don't want to stop there, okay? We want to, uh, to drive that further. Yeah, and if you click on the store right there and you click in the drop down book, Jillian wrote uh, our first Crypto Writer published book. Um, and, and yeah, if you didn't notice earlier, our art director Lars actually created um, created this beautiful art cover work here. It's kind of hard to see, but we have a, a mascot. His name's Finney, um, and he's very back there in the back left corner on the wall. There's a poster of him. He's a little android that's learning things. But there's a whole lot of, bunch of Easter eggs that are um, oh, yes. that are hidden in there different logos and references to bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in there but uh yeah uh, this is our, our first piece it's a really interesting book on um people in blockchain uh -huh. and if you if you are interested in it you can either find it on amazon or here at our store uh three bucks it's it's, it's good she did a good job and um sean ballant again our coo wrote the wrote the afterward We yeah. don't want to stop there, Patrick. Uh, honestly, uh, we're, we're looking into, you and I had a little discussion previously or before this really got started about NFTs. Uh, we're <laughs> looking to uh, start giving, uh, looking at potential uh, NFT giveaways to get people excited and, and yeah. get them joining the community. So uh, mm -hmm. hopefully Lars and, and Kenny and Sean can, can really, really work to, to bring that together and, and make that happen. Yeah, shout out to Lars Comine zu Spat. Uh, the, the, this is an artist and he do beautiful art and all that on the NFTs uh, world uh, on, on Pixios. But uh, he will surely also be available on the Wax Atomic Hub. You are an artist because you are uh, creating bridges and uh, we want to create better uh, onboarding process for the uh, absolutely bring more people on i'm glad you said Lars' last name correctly I, I i struggle with that good good job there there Patrick. thank you thank you uh a much uh, better job th than than i've done yeah no it's exactly right we want to educate and onboard and 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 nfts are a great way to onboard uh, and exactly. make people and learn oh great I, i've got i won i won this nft how do i claim it it's on the wax wax black cha blockchain how what is that? How do I learn about that? So it really yeah. is uh, a good way to bring people together, and that's part of what we're trying to do, Patrick. Uh, you know, we're 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 most of our background, really. I mean, we EOS and and, and Bitcoin, but we're spreading out our community. We've got uh, ETH riders. You know, we've got in uh, NFT uh, NFTs uh, is one of our subjects. <laughs> We've got um, Chris, who does uh, uh, trend analysis on a lot of different uh, projects and, and price analysis of different projects. We've got you know, people that want to write specifically about DeFi. We're trying to, to create not 
really uh, microcosms. We're trying to create a large open community. And what's really cool mm -hmm. about this and having all these writers together in Slack and talking amongst themselves and reading each other's articles and voicing it and liking it is that we've expanded our own horizons too. Like we have writers that had no clue what EOS was or what WAX was. But now that they've gotten into it and seen how easy it is and, and user friendly it is, it's, it's like a whole new world has, has opened up to them. So uh, we do it for the education of others, but, but honestly, and the expansion of a greater community, but we're learning a lot ourselves too. So it's really, really good. Uh, in addition to that, Patrick, if you will, click on the podcast link right there, the top next to the store. Okay. So what we've done here uh, is we've taken a lot uh, of our really, some of the higher quality po posts uh, and, and try on a, on a weekly basis, daily basis, try to put some of those out there. And you can listen to these on YouTube. They're on Spotify. They're on different things. And you can click on that one and you can uh, actually listen to somebody else read the article that was written if you don't have the time to sit down and read it yourself or want to get the high level profile of it um uh, so you can find our our podcast out there we hope to expand that again in the future to, to be more than just uh reading the articles but uh we hope to have our own podcast or, or a series of of content and different series of podcasts out there in the future so keep an eye on that and then something else we're doing, I mentioned you know, the publication, we are taking some of our, uh, the best of the quarter and putting those into written publications with hopefully some new artwork, et cetera, yes, and have yes. a quarterly publication. So, uh, so we're going to have more books that are written as well. So we're expanding. We're, you know, it's, it's fun. This is a growth period for, for not only crypto, but for us as well. And uh, it's, it's really exciting. The content that deliver uh uh, crypto writer is just amazing guys you, you see you have on the side of bitcoin you have uh, eth so ethereum writer you have eos writer and if we focus a little bit on eos writer we see we have a, a eos weekly podcast discussing about the, the the news on eos because it is growing community growing very fast, development series on the EOSIO software to understand what are the last uh, uh, improvements. And I think crypto writers do exactly the same thing, high level and always more into the deep. And you do that with podcast. Uh, that's your first product, the podcast. That's what we click from your website, podcast, yeah. You have made a page to onboard onto the the voice community to to facilitate the onboarding process. So maybe right. We can, we can so so voice uh, the beta, if you'll remember, launched uh, Valentine's Day last year. So it's almost almost a year old. Exactly. Uh, then then communities were opened up uh, about about four months ago now, three or four months ago now. Uh, and, and voice has slowly allowed the rollout of, of invite invitees at this time. But what they are allowing to do now, and they, they gave people 10 invites only, and every person had 10 invites, so you can invite her more than 10 people. But what they've done now is they've allowed communities to set up uh, invitation pages. So if you look um, uh, at our, uh, right there, the next one over, Crypto Writer Voice, the other tab um, that you will see where, you know, we have a landing page that we can send people uh, to, to join our community, not join our community, but to join voice. Exactly. Uh, exactly. We have this link. That's it right there. That's right. So you go to voice slash join slash crypto writer. Uh, and, and if you're not a, a voice member now and you're in a, in a country that is accepted at this point, which is most of, uh, most of Europe at this point, you can can uh, enter to join that information right there. Put exactly. your stuff, put your info in, hit join voice, and hopefully within 48 to 72 hours, uh, you'll receive instructions on how, how to join voice. 
uh, once you get invoice, uh, they've now set up the communities like we, we discussed. Uh, and and Crypto Writer is now a dedicated community. And that's where we publish all uh, our articles to. So if you hit the Discover Communities tab there, Patrick, we can look just briefly what communities look like on voice. Um, these are the different communities that are out in voice right now. So you've got options, not, not a whole lot of options, but you have options now from, from different members, uh, from the future, wellness, travel, things of that nature. Um, but, but, but the one that we want to make sure you join and, and you can see the check mark there, Patrick's yeah, joined. I have is, joined. I have joined yeah. uh, just before the interview. <laughs> is, and so if that you, is, if we can. And that is uh, that little guy right there is Finney. He's our mascot. He's the one we hope to uh, build our NFT giveaways out of. We'll have yeah. some other things as well. But yeah, here you go. Here's our community. I, I want just members. to show you something. I have, um, I have, uh, Voice said an article of Crypto Writer. I am, right. very, I am very proud of that. <laughs> I am currently, you see my voice token. It's very low because I have put all my voice on mm. an article made by Mark Bailey, uh, Bailey, Bailey, uh, Bailey. Of, of Crypto Writer about US issues, blockchain guidance for banks. Because we begin the year with a nice news. Uh, I would say it's a big news indeed. Right. It's about the bank uh, recognizing the blockchain as mm -hmm. a way to transact. And for us, for the EOS community, it's clear we need more liquidity, more uh, investors, more institution. And that's just perfect when there is a regulation. And I was thinking, I was uh, two days ago, two days ago, Mark Bailey was writing this article, four minute read, okay. So I was going on this article. I have voice. I am the one. And if, uh, sorry, if I, if I go back, uh, I have voice said this article. And now you see on the bottom of this article, you see the I have voice set for five dot uh, eight k five thousand eight hundred voice. Yeah, that's right. Fast all my bag <laughs> on this. That's all, uh, all you 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 use them all. So so Patrick, what what you what you need to do now is go back down to the bottom there, and and put a comment. Thank you you can you can use your voice now uh, to to elevate your your comment to the top so when anybody else sees that article okay. uh, they they will see your comment um before they see anybody else's comments now um actually you may have to do it now i think there's a bug right now patrick but try to try to go there and see if you can voice it up there may be a bug right now that after it closes you can't uh can't voice it to the top but they're they're looking at that one we, we we've notified them of that voice voice is not quite ready for for mass onboarding unfortunately it's still it's still a bit of a slow process to uh on board it still still is not not quick so you, you honestly they're not ready patrick for uh a 50,000 people to show up in a 24-hour period clamoring to join voice, but soon, soon they'll get that way. And, and when they're ready, uh, you can expect the voice will do some more. If you go back to communities and they've, they've actually opened up some more communities here recently, Patrick, beyond ours. And they're starting to bring on some more um, influencers, not, not massive influencers, Patrick, but they're bringing on people that have 60, 80, 100, 150,000 followers on, on Twitter, like OnLinks. If you click on OnLinks, um, he is, is doing a great job uh, with getting branding out there. Uh, he, if you scroll down, like he'll take some of his pictures and uh, he'll, 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 he's just doing phones, he's doing, doing other things. But it's not so much that he's getting a whole lot of engagement currently necessarily on voice, but he's Look, so you can't see it. It's hard to see, but he's branded every one of those pictures with a very translucent voice on there. Oh, yes. yes, yes. And so those I pictures... Not, I are, have not seen directly yeah. what it is. Those pictures, when people start searching on Google and things, wow. they're seeing the wow. voice logos pop up and they're seeing voice on his Twitter feeds and he's bringing them back. So yeah. it's, it's slowly going to start building momentum. And then eventually, you know, I imagine, this is just me imagining, they'll start 
onboarding influencers with half a million followers and then a million followers. And then they're currently, we have a closed community, Patrick. That means that only the writers that are, that are actually uh, approved to, to post content uh, to our our community are allowed to. So we, we, we intended this community to be more of like a publication. This is our publication to the world. This is where we share really high quality content uh, that anybody can, can see and come here and can read. Uh, we hope, we hope in the future to have uh, an EOS writer community, an ETH writer community, a Bitcoin writer community. And those we, we, we're thinking we're still working on this. We hope those will be maybe open communities where Patrick can write or anybody can write. Yeah. And then uh, the really good content with, with those people's approval can also come up mm -hmm. and maybe get into our publication. Uh, and so that we would were be hoping, nice. Yeah. That would be nice. Because so currently we're, we're, that we speak, the members of Crypto Writer on Voice can only comment, like, and... Or, or voice it. That's or correct. Voice it. They, they, and they cannot... If and someone's not interested, writing though, article for crypto writer, that's but that would be the goal, I think. Uh, yeah, that's the ultimate goal. And when you know, when when tokens have value, and and when uh, when you actually have this associated value with being inside the publication, we hope that people will want to get the exposure uh, that our community will hopefully bring to the greater crypto community. So that's yeah. that's the ultimate end goal there. But if you scroll down there, you can see some of our most recent articles today. You got Jason's and Mark Helfman's and, and some other good articles that were posted here recently. Uh, but you can go back, you can go back for months now to the very first day that we posted. So we've posted over 750 articles to voice at this time. Not Some uh, filters, because uh, when yes. we are in, in a feed, we cannot uh, sort the article. They are directly sorted automatically. Um, mm -hmm. There is some, but, some point missing, but that will come, that will come. This is a blockchain based Exactly. Platform. And it comes with, with certain troubles. So we hope to have search features out this year uh, and other, other filtering features that will come out uh, here in the near future as well. Peter. You can follow us on Twitter. We have uh, Crypto Rider, ETH Rider, US Rider, I mean, but you can follow <laughs> all those uh, on Twitter as well. And there's Finney again. Uh, but yeah, come out, come out <laughs> and join. Yeah, please join our, our group. Uh, on the 7th, we had 894. And what do you say? We had 930 something here, I believe. So we're, we're slowly uh, ticking up and we'd love to, love to hit a thousand uh, yeah. in the next week or so. This is the perfect time to be bullish again. We are all bullish on EOS and you have launched something beautiful. I am very proud of you and I, hmm. I thank you very Thanks, much. <laughs> and in Telegram, sometimes we have some aids or some third. We have a channel where it is um, only uh, permitted to be bullish. So <laughs> uh, we have a beautiful so channel on Telegram, Named, bullish. And right. maybe you can explain uh, here there is a... a sure. So, yeah. so to, to further your comments, Patrick, you're right. It, it, you know, there are some people that are that are in the right mindset, uh, and and then I'll admit, even I, I struggle, especially when I open up my uh, my portfolio from time to time and, and see Bitcoin at forty thousand and EOS at three, that that I struggle being bullish to a certain extent. And then when I'm exposed to it further on telegram uh i'll admit it gets gets me down and gets you start thinking uh in in a, a bearish uh manner and a couple of people in different actually different channels at the same time were saying man i i, I you know they were they were lamenting the fact that we didn't really have a safe place because there was always somebody attacking us there was always somebody uh being negative there was always something uh, someone, you know, coming in and, and, and saying something that was not bullish. And we said, okay, there's plenty of places on Telegram that we can <laughs> argue and fight and FUD and, and discourage each other. Let's create a place that is uh, encouraging and you can only be bullish. And that's how this was started. And obviously, you're right, Patrick, it was needed 
because within nine days, we have almost 450 people. They're looking for a safe haven to just share information and, you know, speculate and maybe be a little unreasonable, but also have fun doing it. So don't come in here for investment advice. Come in here for a place to, to talk about EOS and, and to have fun talking about EOS and not having to fight the FUD that we do in other Telegram channels on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, so along those lines, uh, I thought it would be fun to start the hashtag bullish on EOS um, and get it out there on Twitter with anything you saw that was bullish. So we'd have an easy way to find it, an easy way to come back and instead of uh, using EOS or anything else and, 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 and look for some positivity that's out there beyond this Telegram group. Uh, we're going to give for the next four weeks away, we're going to give away 100 EOS to people that use the hashtag bullish on Twitter. And at the end of this week, uh, three more days, two, three more days, I forget exactly when, um, mm -hmm. by the time this comes out, this will already have happened, but we're going to give away hundred EOS to uh, a certain number of people that use this hashtag and got some traction and, or were funny and, or, uh, were the most bullish. we got a few little awards that we're going to give away. So we're going to give away, uh, 105 EOS, Nice. Uh, at the end of the week, just to try to lift spirits, try to drive engagement, try to get a, a, a bullish sentiment out there in the community. So please come join. Uh, it's it's bullish EOS uh, is is the Telegram channel, and the hashtag is bullish bullish on EOS. You know that the technology uh, is is okay for you. Uh, you have no doubt on this side, and you, you are very focused on to onboard the people. So. I think it's very beautiful what you are doing because you are doing these bridges. So I think we we have covered uh, we have covered the subject, or you have still I think we've something to maybe to add. Uh, to, hey, to I would just remind people: no, what we've done here before. Uh, hey, join join uh, bullish EOS Telegram. Uh, make sure you join uh, Voice. If you don't have Voice yet, make sure you use our our. You can use our landing page to join voice. Please come on, check it out. And if nothing else, um, make sure you follow us, uh, Crypto Writer, on, on voice and, and join our community. Uh, we yeah. love to hear comments. We love to um, interact with people. That's one of the things we do it for uh, is, is not for the, uh, the fake voice tokens right now, but we do it for the interaction from the community. And, and that's what we love. We love your comments. Uh, we love your, your, your feedback. So um, please, if you like it, just take a few minutes to interact with us. We really appreciate that. I am very happy to be for the first time with you into this uh, EOSIO Swiss workshop. And it, that will be not uh, the last time. We will have other one. Uh, I have made uh, many time with Yves LaRose. I will continue to do with some people that will be regular into this 2021 EOSIO Swiss workshop and sure to have new guests very value added to, to discuss with. So we, so thank you, Cheney, and uh, I see you until next time. Thanks for having me, Patrick. I'll be back when EOS is fifty dollars. Oh, strong hands, strong hands. <laughs> <laughs>
late 2017 actually we we announced that we would build uh we would actually be the first a application to build on eos um we got 30 million in funding a few months later this was during the ico actually so when we said that we didn't have the final eos uh software released um and we got a lot of support from block one um and and the eos venture capital you know ecosystem um, I think it, as of today, we're still the most, uh, the largest um, investment, and uh, we're pretty thankful for that. Um, we started building on EOS, uh, you know, the actual mainnet in 2018, just a month uh, after it was released. We uh, re released our IQ token, our airdrop, which we gave uh, over half to EOS Genesis holders. Um, and since then, we've been building out an ecosystem on uh, Everpedia, you know, predict, mind swap, we'll get, and we'll get into what those are. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we have branched out to other chains to build some of these other products. And it doesn't really mean there's uh, strengths or weaknesses to, you know, uh, delegated proof of stake or, or things like that. But I think that we as a company and a project and as a ecosystem um, want to be just as a as just a neutral protocol, uh, as blockchain agnostic as possible. Although we, it's obvious that we um, built on EOS at the beginning because it's a, it's a good, uh, it's a good chain to, um, you know, build decentralized applications on applications that uh, have a lot of state changes and things like that. So, so far, uh, things have been uh, going extremely well for for Everpedia. So. Everypedia ecosystem is on top, is running on top of the EOS mainnet as a, as a blockchain uh, to settle your event at the end. You use also IPFS when we are on the Everypedia website, everypedia.org. At the bottom of each page, we see a link to IPFS. It's, it's to store large uh, resource like videos or images on IPFS. And um, I would say to, to scale, you have envisioned to go with the DAP network from Liquid Apps. Um, yeah, I mean, Liquid Apps, I've been a big fan of for a while. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Benny and, and what those guys are doing over there are yeah. uh, really awesome you know I, I like that they have bridges and and uh all of the stuff that they're doing is actually very helpful especially now in a in a DeFi multi-chain world in fact we um we're going to you know explore more of our products as cross-chain products which which means that they'll it'll be both built on eos as well as ethereum and, and other chains because we think there's value in, in connecting different chains yeah. rather than uh, yeah. building on one as an island, right? Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I asked the question because I was before uh, our talk uh, with uh, Zach Goal uh, during this EOSIO Swiss workshop. We spoke about uh, Liquid Apps, the DAP network, the Edge DSPs now that is possible. We spoke about Oracles. And uh, it's clear that in your case, because you are also, we, we will come on that on the DeFi specifically, you are also using oracles. And if you have go from one chain to other chain, so cross chain, there will be a benefit to use um, solution from liquid apps like uh, the service liquid oracle, I think. <laughs> Everypedia.org, uh, we have uh, predict the prediction market, and we are you have also a product named Mind uh, Swap. So all these products are, uh, I would say, constitute the, the the if we can name it like this, the Everypedia eco ecosystem, and we can say you have a DeFi, so a decentralized. Uh, finance uh, integrated uh, in a way into your uh, ecosystem. So 
can you explain maybe in a high level um, what is the interaction when we are in Eripedia, Predict, MindSwap, uh, about this DeFi uh, decentralized finance integrated into your uh, ecosystem? Decentralized finance is, to be honest, the, the next, uh, you know, zero to one moment in, in crypto that, that actually, you know, creates use uh, for blockchain. It creates uh, really, really useful new ways of organizing communities, applications, transfer of value. So, you know, Everpedia is about archiving and creating uncensorable, decentralized uh, knowledge. Right. And so when we built Predicted MindSwap, we were thinking, what, what is the best way that knowledge meets uh, markets? Right. And, and so prediction markets, I think, in my opinion, are, are basically market dynamics meets future knowledge and, and predictions. Right. That's where the name comes from. And so we could have decided to build anything else in, in DeFi. Right. That had less to do with. Everpedia's mission of on-chain knowledge. We could have built a lending platform, or we could have built like uh, you know just um, other stuff, right? We could have built something like Liquid Apps and then our bridges and, and stuff like that uh, to other chains. But we wanted to build something close to Everpedia's vision, which was decentralized on-chain knowledge. And so Predict represents uh, knowledge markets. We actually like to call Predict uh, knowledge markets instead of prediction markets, even though they're pretty much the same thing. Um, because they represent uh, market participants, uh, especially IQ holders, uh, their view of future events. And so uh, obviously one of the useful things with prediction markets is they show you uh, the participants' likely uh, belief that a particular event or, or something like that was going to happen. So that, that's, uh, that's kind of the rationale between expanding the Wikipedia ecosystem into DeFi and uh, prediction markets and automated market makers. IQ token that is used by Eripedia when we are on Eripedia if we vote for an article or, or if, we, if we want to edit an article or if we want to post an article we need some IQ tokens to do, to do that but if we are not uh, a user at the beginning as a user with our social so for example, uh, if we have a Gmail, Gmail account, we can connect and we have some already IQ token, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Um, and uh, basically, Everpedia is as, as viewable, as readable. In fact, I think a little bit more personally than Wikipedia. It's all free. Yeah. Um, you, you can earn and stake IQ tokens for participating in the governance and editing of, uh, of the platform. But that's not required to to view any of it. In fact, we we have millions of uh, page views uh, a, a month. And actually, now, now that you you bring that up, let me um, let me see compared to voice uh, dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, let me look at the um, Alexa rankings and. Uh, I believe Everpedia gets significantly more. Um, yes, Everpedia gets, uh, yeah, so Everpedia is over twice as large as uh, voice. I think even a little bit bigger. If you look at the uh, Alexa.com uh, rankings of, uh, of, of voice, it is 47,000 uh, internationally and uh, it's top, uh, rank in the United States is 45,000. So in, in the 40, in the mid forties. And Everpedia is actually ranked uh, 8,500 in the United States. So we're many times larger than, than. Yeah, I think maybe for the audience that you have to understand that Everpedia is yeah, voice, there is no comparison uh, with Everypedia. Each tool has his, um, I would say, his uh, specificity or his niche. And it, it's clear, Everypedia, if I don't, 
if I am not wrong, you have already onboarded 6 million articles of the English uh, Wikipedia encyclopedia. It's exactly. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we started out as, as a uh, English fork of Wikipedia. So we have all uh, articles from English Wikipedia. And uh, a lot of them are improved. Uh, a lot of them um, are, you know, edited by both Wikipedia and Everpedia uh, editors. And then we have over 1 million articles of unique content, a lot of crypto projects, people, events, things uh, that uh, is not found on Wikipedia, right? It's, it's exclusive content uh, on Everpedia. And so uh, we're technically, you know, if you think about it, the largest uh, English yeah. Um, encyclopedia in, in the world. Well, obviously, our software and our content is all free and open source. So sometimes our articles also get, you know, copied or forked onto Wikipedia when Wikipedia wants to uh, create an article on something that we have. But it's all part of, uh, you know, open source and free. You know, we have the same actual um, uh, content license. It's Creative Commons. Uh, and so we, it's almost like a symbiotic relationship. So, so everyone knows Uniswap uh, on EOS, D5 Box is kind of the, the big uh, um, AMM, yeah. And uh, MindSwap is, is different because it does everything Uniswap and, um, you know, D5 Box uh, does. It's just a generalized market maker. Mm -hmm. um, but it also allows uh, people to trade uh, prediction market shares, obviously shares from uh, predict.com, uh, so okay. um, our, our prediction market product, right? And so um, it, uh, it allows people to trade tokens as well as prediction market shares. So what, what do you mean exactly by shares? So, I mean, prediction markets allow you to purchase, uh, trade, buy, and sell uh, shares in the outcome of events, right? So if you have a... Uh, election markets. So for example, you know, the market is who will be, you know, the, the next president of the United States. There's, uh, there's usually two shares for, for that because uh, most people want to trade two outcomes, right? It's uh, the shares are Donald Trump and Joe Biden, right? Yeah. And so the, the purchase, the price of the shares uh, usually is between zero cents to, uh, you know, one dollar or, or unit of whatever currency. So IQ, uh, and, and predict. And so whatever price they trade at, so for example, 0.5, uh, we would say that trades on 50 cents on the dollar or 0.5 uh, IQ um, as, as a price. And that represents the 50% uh, chance that, you know, um, that outcome will happen, right? So it's, it's a basic yeah. mechanic of, uh, of, of how prediction markets work. Okay. okay. And after that, we can go on mind swap. Yeah, exactly. And so it makes swapping shares in different markets as well as swapping the shares for different tokens like EOS or something like that uh, much easier, right? So imagine you, you know, that's a, that's a lot a use, of... Okay, that's a use case. But we can also go on MindSwap if we want, uh, we want just to, to swap an IQ token for other things. Yep, exactly. It's a generalized market maker as well, yes. Wow. So it's... Uh, at this, I would say the 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 mind swap tool can use the predict uh, shares, and it can also don't be linked with that. You can use as the generalized uh, solution to swap. That's correct. That's correct. And we can swap for a stable coin, USDT. Um, and yeah, we're, uh, more markets uh, of coins and, and swaps are always being added. So that, that's correct. Right now, uh, we, we don't have a USDT uh, mm -hmm. market, but it's actually coming. So, so yes, very soon. Wow. Okay. So I think uh, that's complement a lot what we have already discussed on Eripedia. Uh, that was more on the side of um, the encyclopedia itself and the knowledge base knowledge base itself without without to have discussed too much about the DeFi. So you have this DeFi integrated layer into the ecosystem, we can say. And it is a DeFi, um, we speak also about pro profi. Uh, the difference is with the programmable finance, 
there will be more regulation, uh, regulated framework. We obviously follow the jurisdiction of everything that, uh, of, of everywhere that we are and in, in our, in our users uh, in, in terms of that. But what we do is we build applications that are completely permissionless. And for example, if we somehow disappeared tomorrow, right? Or, or for example, Dan, uh, you know, resigned today uh, at, at block one. Um, we obviously won't resign, but if we did like how Dan is, uh, is leaving, the entire platform lives on, right? And, and the people who own the tokens uh, can govern and update and, and make it better. So we, we uh, on the base layer, we build these applications and protocols. That's what we focus on. And, um, and that's the most important part in my opinion. So, so we, we're not thinking about uh, how can we as a company um, create like uh, profi and integrations. We, we like to build the infrastructure, right? The, the base layer, the swaps, the prediction markets, the, uh, the pro protocol for agreeing on hashes to the public chain for articles, right? Um, and, and things like that. And then uh, any product built around that, um, sure, that, that can, uh, someone else, for example, can build um, a regulated uh, prediction market um, on top of the predict protocol that has uh, specific US-based, uh, you know, profi, um, you know, uh, rules and, and things like that. Yeah. When you are on the EOS ecosystem, you are only using the EOS mainnet. Yeah, yeah, and and I mean, I know there's a lot of other chains and, and things yeah. like that, but I I very much uh, personally, obviously, this is just my own opinion. Yeah. Uh, I very much uh, agree with a lot of large members of the community that yeah. um, more projects should be using uh, EOS mainnet. We'll take a use case, maybe when someone is in uh, the in the Eripedia, uh, he's voting or he's commenting uh, or he's editing an article. What happens, for example, when someone edits an article or create an article? That's what what is trans what is transmitted on the on the EOS mainnet. Yeah. So all of our products have almost all of their logic entirely based on mainnet. So so on Eripedia. Uh, the voting of the hashes, whether the hash is the current state of each article, uh, the reward of uh, IQ, the slashing of IQ, you know, if there's uh, malicious, you know, voting and, and things like that, all of the logic that actually goes into deciding which hashes uh, represent which articles, that's all on the mainnet. And then for predict, um, everything is on the mainnet from creating the markets to trading of the shares um, as well as resolving of, of the markets by, by vote of IQ holders and, um, and uh, distributing the, the IQ to the, the winners of whichever share is the, the outcome of the market. Um, and obviously for MindSwap, the AMM, uh, everything is on chain, right? Uh, the, the tokens, the trading, the um, swapping of, of everything is also entirely on, the US on chain. Media. Also yes. on the so the only thing that is outside of the EOS world, when we are, uh, I would say, when we use on the, the, the your solution into the EOS ecosystem, something is not totally on the EOS ecosystem is the oracles that are based on Ethereum. Most of them, most of them on, on the Ethereum smart contract. Uh, yeah, but we do have uh, an EOS mainnet version of all of them. So, so actually, every okay. single thing is is on uh, EOS. But, but like I said, we've started building a lot of infrastructure on Ethereum as well, and and you'll see more of that in the in the coming uh, weeks as we basically build out a lot of the products that we have okay. um, on uh, on Ethereum bridge to our you know our EOS products. <laughs> We're going to build, uh, well, we, we like liquid apps, but we're going to build the native uh, infrastructure on Ethereum 
uh, ourselves as well. We might use and integrate with uh, liquid apps where it's necessary, but I think that part of our um, our goal is to build entirely uh, native uh, software on Ethereum going forward, as well as on EOS. So, so okay. it's not more of a porting uh, some functionality to Ethereum, but it's actually building native uh, protocol software on uh, Ethereum as well as EOS. So in a certain sense, you could say we both uh, were both on uh, EOS and Ethereum. Today, I have the chance to be with um, the president, the co-founder of uh, Eripedia. This is not uh, every day that we can speak and that you have taken the time to do to do that is just uh, fantastic. So I, I thank you very much and uh, I see you until next time. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Sam. Take care. Take care. To be with us today. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Patrick, for having me here again, like uh, for the second time in a row. It's awesome. I really like it. Last time was really just scratching the surface. Yeah. And there's just so much going on. And uh, I'm happy to be here again and go a little bit deeper into like a couple of details. You, you just finished the sales on the 18, right? Yeah, it was a 48 hour sale. Um, and before there was a lot of production, conceptualizing, you know, all the things. I don't know if you can see on my eyes. Yeah, I, I have see. A little bit of I see. And uh, eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so it was quite the adventure, but I think in the end it worked really well. We, we have a, a bunch of innovations compared to episode one to episode two mm -hmm. that, I can, that I can explain because it's. Oh. Where we give the NFTs, the collectibles, we gave them more utility, right? We, we gave them, uh, we had Daniel Kayer making uh, our EOS Nation smart contract wizard. Greetings. Shout out, uh, he, shout uh, out, yeah. He gave us some, um, some of his time to develop a smart contract, a battle smart contract, actually. Um, so we can, the, the NFTs, they can, they can be used in a battle against each other. And it makes sense because it's like, humans, we have human characters and we have zombies, you know, and, and you buy a certain uh, category, which is like the base, the most common category, and you can send them to the smart contract. And in that battle, we invented weapons. So you can basically boost your character's uh, power. Um, so we had a whole new category come up for that. We did some nice uh, giveaways in the community and, and also some people could send in pictures mm -hmm. um, we turned into NFT. So it was a really nice interactive um, promotion activity. Um, what we also added was um, more high resolution uh, uh, animations because the animations, they, um, because there are so many frames, the, the, the files get bigger. And uh, with Atomic Hop, I don't there you see you have like a limitation of two MB, two megabytes. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So we, we looked into other opportunities. And now with episode two, we have like uh, uh, really higher resolution images because yeah. we, we did like the hashing uh, ourselves. We used the service and then we just imported the hash. The hash we we yeah. uploaded to IPFS and then we, we just loaded the, the hash into the Atomic atomic Hub. So that's new compared to, to uh, episode one, which I really like because we have more ultra rares, more animations coming up. Um, that's new. And uh, yeah, another thing was the metaverse. We uh, exactly. had our first exhibition in, in some of our metaverse parcels. Uh, that's just uh, amazing. That works very well. I have tested myself uh, this universe. Uh, I will let you explain uh, and I will show you also after the, the interview. Uh, you have built an entire uh, showroom uh, into a virtual world, we say metaverse. Uh, it's it's a virtual world, 
and it's smooth, it's work on the mobile phone, it's work on desktop. So can you explain what is this metaverse um, showroom? What, what, you are, what, you are, what are you doing there in this metaverse? Yeah. Well, we, we were talking about NFTs and there are different categories of NFTs as well. And uh, for me, a very interesting category are the land NFTs. It represents ownership, yeah, ownership. property mm -hmm. in the metaverses. And um, they're basically like you own this, like you, you, you own this part of the metaverse and you can interact with other people there so with the first with the first episode we we launched our website right so with the second episode we we created basically what i think will be the websites of the future because it's you can still have like i have links there i show pictures i introduce me i introduce my team people can come and learn about ben city but it's way more interactive because they can experience it um as a game, they can walk through, they can discover things. We did a scavenger hunt where I was hiding things in the three dimensional space where they can go and look for it. So there's way more, like they can also meet there and we can have voice chats or we can kind of, you know, experience the space. Um, so that's something you want to own it, right? When you have a business or when you, when you, when you are an artist or whatever, having your own parcel in the metaverse where also people can just pass by. Or I have neighbors and they come by and see, oh, what is he doing? So it's, it's, it is way more interactive. And um, so <clears throat> this is basically what the metaverse is, but you need to have the right to own it, right? Be if we would do this just in, in SimCity or in, in a centralized uh, environment, then you wouldn't put so much effort in it. And, and it's also, it can be censored, right? So the metaverse is really like a decentralized virtual world where I own my, my property and I can build something in there. I can build an experience, right? Yeah, totally. For people, totally. right? Yeah. Which is like way more advanced than, than a two-dimensional website. This showroom is based on uh, crypto voxels. Uh, yes. Right, and it is it is blockchain based, totally blockchain based. It is decentralized. It the the land NFTs they are based on Ethereum, yeah. Exactly. But I, yeah, but that's I think metaverses in the future or the interoperability between blockchain will be really happening in the metaverses. Yeah, clear, clearly. But why not? Right. Yeah, we are here for the multi-chain, and it's clear uh, between the metaverse. That would be some logical thing to have some uh, bridges, interoperabilities, like we will have uh, the Wasatomic Hub on on uh, on based on NeoSIO technology, uh, have some bridges with other blockchains protocol. Uh, why not? So that's not limited to the EOS world. give an example about the interoperability right yeah it's because when we are going into these metaverses we we want to take our stuff we want to take the things that we own i want to take like there are other nfts like wearables for example um we we go into the metaverse with an avatar the avatar we don't want to look all the same we want to be individual the way we express ourselves so you you have fashion for nfts that i can wear with my avatar like skins you have in computer games right now these things are also they're traded as nfts non-fungible tokens so there's exactly. a lot of room for the whole fashion industry and actually like they are already fashion brands that which which um if you buy the the real-time item like a hoodie or or a t-shirt they yeah. give you an nft for all the metaverses so you can wear it wherever you're going and i think this is like really important for a metaverse itself to be attractive that the people can take whatever they own on whatever blockchain that they can take it and it doesn't it will potentially start with like wrapped assets like we have right now wrapped bitcoin on ethereum or wrapped bitcoin on on eos right this is a trend but wrapped nfts will will also come <laughs> Thank you.
what are the, the constraints or what are the, the other challenges yeah, that you are facing when you are uh, creating this showroom for one city, for example? How it is right now, every metaverse has their own uh, perks, has their own um, properties. Some of some, like theirs, for example, that's why that's why we as Dot Gems, uh, the, the publishing house from EOS Nation for NFTs, what I'm working with Stefan Bisson, um, we went into all the metaverses and we, we explore them and see what we can do with it and, and use them for what they're good at. So we started with CryptoVoxels because, as you said, it's running really smooth. It's really easy to onboard. People can just click a link and they're in there. They don't need to have like a VR headset. Uh, they don't need to have like a super powerful computer with a great graphic card. Um, Yes. So that's why we want to have people that, that experience the metaverse really easy. That's, that's for crypto voxels really well. But it is a little bit like Minecraft, right? It is a little bit like you have blocks, you, 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 right? So there are other metaverses uh, like Somnium Space. They have, an, they, they working already with like a Unity SDK, right? So you can have real game developers doing way more complex, com complex things. Somnium right. is based on so, the blockchain also? Somnium space parcels are also on the blockchain. Right? Yeah, right? Exactly. Because you want, yeah. So you want to own the, the things, otherwise you wouldn't spend so yeah. much time and, and effort yeah. and you also build your business there. Yeah. Um, besides Somnium space, which is like really high definition and, and has like, uh, it's more like a game, it's more immersive maybe. Uh, there are other worlds like sand, Sandbox, which is also a little bit like Voxel. But um, they have also game logic, so it's this is this is another one that we're working on. And um, Somnium Space and um, Sandbox, they are already you can already see that they're working with that they're going for interoperability. So right? between uh, Som uh, Somnium and uh, and Voxel will be some uh, interoperability. You mean? I believe that I believe that there is okay. sure that the. Because, as I said, you want to be—you don't want to create a new game character or, or a new identity in every metaverse. Because you want to take who you are and what you own into the different metaverses. Uh, I was looking about the the surface of your showroom, and I. I... Uh, for purchasing purchasing the the parcels. Yeah. Um, you need to you need to go th through the you need to check in uh, the the auction there's like i think every wednesday there starts a new auction and then they auction of new parts of the world okay um and and new islands and uh, uh, we all got it on on the uh, primary market so when the auction comes you can bid with other people and then you need to kind of look which parcels are going for what prices and what you want to have you always need to look like how big is it? Where is it located? It's important because sometimes you are at a really interesting street or at the center, or sometimes you're just next to the sea. So don't have you don't have much traffic because people okay. don't necessarily walk around. Well, I bought I bought a parcel in Berlin because I'm German and I wanted to yeah, have clear, like clear. you know the <laughs> Berlin <laughs> Island. <laughs> also, I think because Berlin uh, has is very um, Ach, um, yeah, exactly. So I wanted yeah. to have like uh, a gallery built in Berlin. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, you know, uh, and then I bought um, on the Helios Island. I bought uh, a parcel that's called Asia. Because I am living in Asia, you know. So yeah, totally. <laughs> Makes sense. Kind of, but uh, yeah, so I'm currently buying at, at the islands in in crypto voxels. The different islands. That's also interesting. I think further down the uh, further down the road, the islands will have their own kind of community and potentially also make decisions which direction they want to go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can you can think of an island maybe potentially as a, as a DAO or a DAC at some point. Exactly, right. as a DAC, Decentralized yeah. Autonomous Corporation. That's exactly that. Yeah. Modelized with a metaverse yeah. and linked and with the world. real world. That's the beauty. It's linked with our world. You are a yeah. citizen of the world. You, you are in Asia, but you are also uh, from Berlin. So in this metaverse, you have linked your uh, gallery, 
physical because you have also a physical gallery. Uh, you have you have linked with uh, this metaverse world. But to come back to the context of uh, of uh, one city. Uh, what okay. is the ranking of one city in this crypto voxel? I think you are in a good position huh? already. <laughs> yeah, we, we did some activities. So there's a ranking uh, where you, you, you peop the different parcels are ranked by how many visitors they have. And because we did like uh, some, some scavenger hunt in our crypto parcel and we onboarded a lot of new people to crypto voxels that, that didn't know about crypto voxels before, and they tell their friends and, and we gave away some, some nice weapons. If they finished the scavenger hunt, we had a couple of visitors. So we went, uh, I think we're now uh, third place on, on the weekly and we're in the top 10 in, on the months. But in January, you begin on the crypto voxel and you are already... <laughs> Uh, well ranked that's the that's fantastic yeah, because yeah. a lot of uh, traffics uh, on twitter yeah. uh, the tweets and uh, all the all the um, the social uh, posts that we that you have made for the for the for the sure. for so, yeah. But we can also in the metaverse, which is which I like, you can do events in the metaverse, which will be like broadcasted to all the other people that are in the metaverse, and you can do little screenshots. You, you do a yeah. womp. In crypto works, it's a womp. You can yeah. just click on and then it takes a picture of your screen and you can write a comment. So it's like a tweet in the metaverse and it gets broadcast to everyone that's there. Fantastic. It's really like when you have a nice moment, you can just womp it. <laughs> Fantastic. And I Your beautiful background, uh, this uh, yeah. world, dot gems. Uh, it's yeah. clear. Uh, it's the NFT powerhouse that you have created with Stefan Bisson. Shout out to Stefan. He do uh, as you uh, an amazing job. What we want to do with dot gems is, um, as you just said, uh, onboarding more people into NFTs and onto blockchain. Right? Um, for digital artists, it's really hard to to monetize their work and sell their pieces because like you can easily uh, copy it. So there's no no scarcity. Um, so that's really powerful for, for NFTs. And um, what we're doing at the moment with Start Gems is like in the different sectors, we, we, we communicate with people that, that are creative in different fields and um, we help them go through the process on, on how would would we take their intellectual property or their creative output and and turn it into like something that can be sold as an NFT, as an NFT series, as a collectible, as a unique item, uh, as like a giveaway to to build their customer base? So there are different, a lot of different approaches. And as Dot Gems, we go through the processes with all of them, and. Um, really customize their NFT experience for them as a product or, or as a creative, but also for their customers, right? So I can't go into too many details about what yeah. we're working on. It's part, yeah. partially, partially there, I'm working with the gallery that's selling my works, right? Because I'm like my paintings. So that's, that's one approach. A gallery that sells paintings that is in a traditional world, we need to go, we need to come up with concepts and ideas. How would we take this physical work and turn it into something digital? And how do we explain collectors that are, you, that are liking artists and want to support artists? How do we explain to them the, 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 the medium of NFTs? How do we explain artists the medium of NFTs? All the potential, all the, all the things that they can do with it, like burn it, make it transferable or non-transferable. What are the different drop models? You know, you can have open editions, you can have limited editions, you can have one-on-ones, you can sell them in, in a lot of different ways. And, and these are things that we want to explore, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, with, with digital arts, it's really interesting because their work is already digitally native. So it's, it's already existing in the internet. It's already there. You just need to build in or help them build in the scarcity and yeah. then, you know, make, make their customers or their fans like understand what scarcity is.
how we work with Van City, how were we basically taking an existing PDF that, that he wanted to, to, to distribute and how did we, 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 we turn it into things that people collect. That, um, so we break down the pages, we, we break down the characters, we, we build a game around it. So all these kind of things come on top of the actual IP that he created. And that's one customized solution that we made for a comic book. It would be completely different for, for yeah. um, a musician. It would be different for the, the artists with my gallery. You present it differently. You, you, you uh, add different values through NFTs. Exactly. Right? And this is what Dot Gems is exploring. What, what we want to um, position ourselves is like, you have the creatives, you have creators, and you have collectors. And in between, we want to position um, Dot Gems to consult between both of them and bring them together through the exactly. medium of NFT. Totally. And there are totally. a million ways. So this is the vision that we're having. And we're, uh, and you know, you will see a lot of different approaches and different solutions for NFTs coming from the gems in 2021. And you are also working with the tools provided by Bounty Block, uh, yeah. fantastic uh, tools. And I saw there, there are they have developed something new now. You can send an NFT as a, uh, an email. You can send an NFT as a, an SMS. You can send it to someone that doesn't have a blockchain account yet. Voila. And it guides someone to, to the into the process of like okay. Oh, now I have a blockchain account. Am I doing? Am I doing blockchain now? So it's so easy. Block, uh, Bounty Block did a really good thing. So it really helps us to to do the whole onboarding thing and also distributions and you know. Yeah. It's it's big big shout out to Bounty Block. Yeah, to big shout out to uh, Bounty yeah. Block. Definitely, uh, I love this uh, toolbox. Uh, and it's clear without this toolbox, you could spend more time also into the production. Uh, process, I would say. Yeah, especially when 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 the email helps you create the account, because this is you know that this is the the hardest thing to explain people to get the account. So if we can, let's say, as Van City, send people that are interested in 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 a product already just a promotional item as an NFT, and in order to download them, they need to create a wax wallet or or any kind of wallet really. Exactly. Then, from then on, we 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 know that they're kind of having an account. And I will put a link also into the video description to a video made by Stefan uh, Bisson on the the the, the wax uh, onboarding. Uh, first, with the wax cloud wallet, you, uh, you can be a non a non uh, wax user, and this is a, a custodian uh, account. If after that you want to be totally manage your own keys, you can create your own Wax account. And finally, you can finish with something, the Wax name service. So I, I will put a, a link on that because you can go step by step and custodian account, that doesn't mean that you cannot trust. Surely when you work with people like uh, Wax, uh, this is totally uh, uh, reliable uh, people. And I, I would say you just have to make some trust to go first with a custodian account. And after that, you can go more and more uh, independent, I would say. I'm really excited about like how, how different aspects all come together, right? And like how an NFT can become part of a game, can be part, can also be an artwork, but also can be, you know, something completely different, how people um, connect to each other. It has like a, a feature where people chat about some something uh, and it has a social aspect to it, right? Some art collectors, they buy art and they just keep it for themselves. With NFTs, you, 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 you start talking about it, you start sharing it, you start trading on it. And I see all this like coming together right now. I, I see way more utility coming into, into, into blockchain or no, into, in, into NFTs. 
And this brings, and also with the interoperability, you just talked about okay. WAX and, and, and EOS, uh, we haven't talk, touched on, on, on Upland yet because they are starting right now to, to, uh, to work with the Blockchain Heroes. Blockchain Heroes is a really nice uh, collectible series about the, all, the, all the blockchain uh, personalities and, and, and uh, phenomena now with, with episode two yeah. or series two. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're onboarding their collectibles, their wax based collectibles into the metaverse of on EOS, uh, which is based, yeah, it's based on EOS. So you already have like a portal between chains where you can import wax based assets into EOS. Now they start moving into you, that your avatars, your game characters can be owned. That is that they're unique, and you can show that you are different. You can show your in your individual um, uh, preferences by creating an NFT. And, uh, and, and how do you call it? Explorers in in Upland, you call your avatar as an explorer, right? Well, avatar so is can, an explorer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you mm -hmm. call it as an explorer. So you can already design your your explorer as a unique item. Either okay. you buy it from an artist. They 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 work cooperate with an artist. Um, they turn their, the artist's work into the Explorer and it's like a really limited edition. So they start doing this. So it's not only the, the land, then now it's your avatar. The next thing that you do is like you import from other chains through the portal NFTs from other chains. So you can build your house, which the game started with. Now it's like you can do three-dimensional and you can start a business there by selling NFTs there. Fantastic. So this is like... Upland did it like they started with the land, then they went into the avatar or the fashion or like the, the personal expression of the game character. And now they're coming with the interoperability of importing other uh, NFTs from other chains. So you can build a business, a gallery, a museum, um, or you can have just have a cafe and hang nice paintings on the wall. And then people come to your, to your business to, you know, because just because it's nicely decorated because that's, that's also the thing. If everybody moves into into virtual worlds, or at least has like a second home there, um, to visit people from all over the world, because in the metaverse, I can just visit you, you know, and we can have this chat into my in my uh, crypto voxels or upland living room, and it's it's super nice. So being bullish on us you you can look forward for the next collection that's coming out uh, on on from dot gems we have something planned bullish. <laughs> oh yeah you this, this, something this, spicy uh, wow it's a spicy <laughs> news it's a bullish <laughs> news it's an nft dot gems uh, bullish news yeah fantastic well, I, can, I can tell you that the next collection that dot gems gonna bring out it's gonna be on us yeah we, it's gonna be yeah, exactly. We spoke oh. the last time that we have the Wax Atomic Hub uh, on the Wax blockchain, and there will be also the Wax Atomic. There is already the Wax Atomic it Hub also cool. on the EOS mainnet, but there is not a lot of uh, collections. But uh, you will be there. Dot Gems is planning to do the next collection on EOS. Fantastic. The EOS Hashtag mainnet. Bullish on EOS. <laughs> totally hashtag bullish on EOS. We will publish that uh, everywhere. Fantastic. So one more time, shout out to all the team of Vancity, Reed, Lucier. Shout out also to EOS Nation Ambassador, Brian. Uh, he is also based in uh, Canada, in Vancouver. And uh, by speaking with uh, Reed, Lucier, um, that's like that, that uh, the, 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 all the things uh, began for Vancity. Thank you very much, Martin, to be with us today. I appreciate your uh, venue on episode uh, six, and we will continue the, um, the season with you. Uh, I, can, I cannot unveil the, at which episode exactly, but for sure, you will be on uh, your SEO Swiss workshop. So thank you very much for your time. I'm such a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me on again, Patrick. Awesome job. Awesome job. Thank you. Your thank you. Workshop. 
Go dot gems, go dot gems, and go EOS and go uh, EOS Nation. It's clear. Go EOS EOS Swiss Workshop. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you very much, and uh, see you until next time. Bye. Bye. between EOS Nation and EOS Go to provide the EOS X Explorer with DeFi integrated. So the EOS X, it's the Block Explorer, it's the one-stop EOS DeFi portal. So something new on this EOS X portal, it's the Stable Exchange, SX for Stable Exchange and particularly a stable exchange for EOS. Developed by EOS Nation, shout out to Donny Carrière, the developer of the smart contract. So you can go on the Telegram EOS X DeFi, that's the entry point. The description of the platform developed by EOS Nation, they want to build a secure and reliable financial blockchain instruments. That's their and all based on the EOS mainnet. So that's directly layer one. SX EOS is just like Rex. If you want to redeem your EOS back plus interest, you can send back your SX EOS to the vault and receive back your EOS plus any interest accumulated during that period. X EOS are wrapped EOS used in the vaults.sx. There are two smart contracts. The token SX, that's the token smart contract, and vault.sx, that's the to manage the vault, to wrap the SX EOS. EOS Nation can add more tokens in the future. Right now, it's only EOS, but they can add also USDT stablecoin or PBTC down the road if they, there is a demand. When you go on the EOS X Explorer on the DeFi portal and you have a page named uh, Vault and there you have a user interface and you can uh, manage uh, easily to send your EOS tokens to the vaults. You send your EOS token to the vault.sx smart contract then you will receive your SXEOS token back. That's like a liquidity certificate. They will earn interest via the interest yielding strategies implemented by EOS Nation. Currently, for example, the flash loan. Whenever you want to redeem back your EOS plus interest, you have to simply send back the SX EOS tokens to the vault. When you send your EOS token to the vault, you be part of the SX EOS tokens holder with your account EOS that you have. About the smart contract, you can go on GitHub. Okay, you see the description here with the SX flash loans, you borrow any amount of liquidity instantly for near zero fees and no collateral. And that's, that's, that is working in the same transaction. And the S6 vaults, vaults follow interest yielding strategies that are designed to maximize the yield of deposited assets and minimize the risk. And all that is created by EOS Nation and the code is audited by Slowmist an audit uh, organization, very well known. So the multiple strategy of SX EOS are the flash loans, the resource exchange, the high interest proxies, launch promotion. Okay, that's the four strategy that are used. It's clear that the REX will transit to the new resource model, the power-up model. 
it's clear that this strategy uh, for the point two here, Rex, will be uh, adapted. You can go on the EOS X Explorer to this vault and you will be part of the SX EOS token holders and you will begin to earn interest. So about Nova Crypto Startup, the projects that I have for 2021. On the left side, it's clear that I want to focus on EOSIO technology, the platform architecture, the EOSIO smart contracts, and continue to do startups, workshops, and public workshops as of today. It's clear, all based on the EOS IO technology and the EOS mainnet. I have click dashboards using Datamart provided by Gestec because Gestec is providing a Datamart. And from these dashboards, when I am uh, on a data visualization, I decentralize the data visualization. I securize this data visualization on the EOS mainnet at any time. After that, you do a click discovery. You are on the click view. You are doing your uh, click. You are doing, doing your discovery. At a time, you can say, okay, now I want to securize this view as a timestamp on the EOS mainnet. So that's use the JSTEC in your private space because as a customer of Nova Crypto, you have your own decentralized platform. You are using our Uh, servers located in a, in the Swiss Alps in a former military bunker and when you arrive on your private space you have the tools that you need to, to, to work for example Gestec and from your Gestec in your private space uh, you can connect to your data source that you have in your company and uh, using for example ClickView to discover your data you have a wedding between ClickView and the EOS mainnet. That's the goal and through our Gestec platform toolkit. That's what I am uh, developing. And it's clear the EOS IO Swiss Workshop 2021 today, January 23rd, but next February 23rd, we forecast already planet that will be unveiled soon. Then I will have April 23rd, and June 23rd, September 23rd, and finally December 9th. It's clear you have all the workshops on YouTube, but you find also the workshops on the website eosblockchainswitzerland.ch. I have a Telegram channel, EOS Swiss Valley. So thank you very much to have attended to this EOS IO Swiss workshop number 6, January 23rd. You can see this video now or maybe you will see later on don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel smash the bell like the video share uh, it's totally free onboarding process eos io swiss workshop number seven planet for february 23rd i will have four guests that will be unveiled soon and once again It's about education, it's about Educational Digest content, so just after the workshop, don't hesitate at any time. You have the link into the video description about the, the mind map, about the, the NFTs on the Wax Atomic Hub, so go there and engage with the EOS IO community. Go into the Telegram channel also and go on EOS.io website, learn and Go back to the previous workshops also and uh, I see you until next time. Thank you very much.